When I was three years old, my father said, that boy has got a memory of an elephant, he just hasn't got a size. My father was a farmer and we lived below the sea bank along the Kramer, not far away from the Gat van Zijpe. In 1953, the bank burst at seven places and the farm, dating back to the 19th century, was swept away by the waves. Almost 300 people drowned in that village alone. Nobody on the mainland was aware of this fact. That day, I was selecting pigeons at Jan Arden's place in Steenbergen. I can still remember that the sun was shining treacherously through the clouds. I've never kept many diaries, but on the other hand, I kept a scrapbook and some nice pictures of my youth. Remind me of Adetonga, to put it bluntly, a dock hurl of sailors and country people. I took my first steps in the world of pigeons in 1924 at Conipius in Middle Harness. Not long after that, Thomas Millicent and Jan Klapmutz offered me a membership of the Gevleugel de Bode. I was about to get acquainted to some famous names. The first crack that, by the way, didn't at all look capable of what he had done, reminded me of the kind of bloke that Pellissier himself was. Ugly as hell, dirty white eyes, skinny and tough, neither belly nor buttock. That pigeon taught me that it isn't quantity that counts, but the quality of the muscles and as little as possible connective tissue or other dead weight. It belonged to the stock of Machi de Vries from Overhoven. I'm not kidding when I say that it won the first international of Valladolid, halfway between Santander and Madrid. This happened around 1929. From that day onwards, I examined thousands of pigeons in lots of countries and in four continents of the world, always for study and practice of the sensitivity of the fingertips, comparative research for the detail which you could call athletic capability, in search of latent possibilities, after all, the only thing that counts. Luck pursues the man who doesn't give in. A cock is a promising ace if he breeds well with different hens. To find this bird is the aim of stallion breeding. The clara of the Smet Matthijs and the steer of Ambruana were the best I've ever known. I think that Oud Doffertje was the most promising pigeon from before and after the war. Alois Tichelbout of Lauer, a small flax farmer, is the founder of a series of unequaled pointers, Marx collectors that match the performances of other top pigeons of the strains Bricou, Delbar, Horemans, Jan Sarvar Arendonk, and so on. He gained fame by the performances of three pigeons. First, the Oude Zwarte, old black one, also called Oude Bordeauxche, although it collected its earliest prizes with a series of Angoulames. Second, its son, Oude Bleke, old pale one, and third, Oude Zwarte, old black one. In the 30s, these three pigeons dominated the provincial races ranging between 600 and 800 kilometers in western Flanders. The breeding value of these pigeons is legendary. Champions like Bostein, Van Hee, Marcel de Smet, Descamps van Haasten, Dietard, De Nees, Norman, Van den Broeke, De Weert, Van Bruana, Broekaert and others performed miracles with their aid. Michel Descamps van Haasten, his neighbor and caretaker Hector Maas, have the honor of bleeding these pigeons through inbreeding to the highest possible level between 1945 and 1965 and preserving their qualities for a comparative long period. A lot of sticklebouts were medium-sized, sometimes even small. Only specialists liked them. On long distances, they didn't surpass the pigeons of Jan Arden of Steenburg but all round they were equal, maybe even better. The finest sticklebout I've ever known was Roosgele, of Marcel de Smet of Waregem, a close relative to his first international Barcelona. The Roosgele won a lot of long distance prizes, for instance, three national cahors, three pigeons in the loft on the very day of the release. Roosgele at 11 o'clock p.m. in almost complete darkness two national Liburne, 
51 National Angoulême. It is a full brother of the Bart First National Carcassonne. The best years of Maurice Delbar of France are between 1935 and 1955. If the war wouldn't have interfered, and if he wouldn't have been so generous with his pigeons, like in later years Jan Arden of Steinbergen, he would have reached a solitary height in pigeon flying. Nobody had better pigeons than Maurice Delbar. In 1935, this champion won second, seventh, eleventh, and thirteenth national prize in the Entente de Belge from Dax. He had entered four pigeons. His secret was eyes, muscles, and nerves of steel. The muscles built up powerful bundles, diagonal on the chest, long, supple, and strong as flax. When I took the kleine Lichte, the little light one, into my hands in 1944, he was moist and sweaty as usual and ready to be basketed for Saint Vincent with a strong headwind. Of this pigeon, he had two dozen brothers and sisters. When I saw them for the very first time, I told his friend Stav Dujardin of Groude, this is a Jack Dempsey of pigeon flying. In 1937, he entered six pigeons for the Narbonne National. First, second, fourth, fifth, ninth and fifteenth places. They were all brothers and half-brothers. As far as I know, this has never been equaled. In 1938, six were entered for Saint Vincent National. First, third, fifth, thirteenth and fourteenth places. In 1945, he became Belgian national champion for distance and long distance. This success was based upon the offspring of the pre-war glory. Two of them were Bon Bleu and its son Ballon, two great flyers. The world famous talk of Jan Arden dates back to a hen of 1944 received as a gift by Van Tuyn from Del Bar. It was a daughter of Kleine Lichte, the little light one, and a nine year old hen that flew faster than the best widowers. These and other crossbreeds gave Moritz a place in the hearts of his friends. Most of them have already departed his life, and Moritz himself reached the age of 90 years. The Catrice brothers of Moore ran a grocery shop. Already in their early youth, they owned Van der Velde pigeons, but before World War I, only speed races and short distance races existed. The big step forward was taken in 1926 with the Grote Blauen, big blue one, of Neston Kastelein. I talked to Oscar Catrice for the very first time in 1935 during the Antwerp Champions Day. He told me that Neston Tremery of Oldenburg had persuaded him of participating in the international Bordeaux Belgium Holland. The Catrice brothers entered four pigeons and started with the fourth. Twenty years later, they bred three national first prize winners out of one couple. In the period between their starting year, 1930, and 1960, when they were old and weary, they continuously belonged to the international pigeon flying elite. They usually basketed between 20 and 30 pigeons, and very seldom they gathered less than 60% of the prizes. Mostly starting out with a few very early ones, and especially with hard weather. I think they won about 16 first national prizes, as many as Van Hay. Dusardin had a few less. The Catrice pigeon was a tough bird. A farm pigeon, not fine feathered, but very strong. They wore a strong coat. The eyes weren't important, they had hard eyes that nobody liked. This implicated that for breeding they only based themselves upon competition results. The Dreyer, Twister, who won the first national of an exhausting royant, was a pigeon with a square head. Its sister was even worse. The Bulte, Lump, was no beauty either. Knowing his reputation, he always reminded me of the hunchback of the Notre Dame. But I think Victor Hugo's imagination never reached that far. To 
The Catrissa pigeons had a reputation to fly until they would drop dead out of the sky. They didn't keep red or sallow pigeons. They achieved the best crossbreeds with the Vrins and Stichelbalds from Bostein. André van Bruwane of Lauwe, one of my oldest friends in fancying, is almost 80 years old. I think he's from 1910, just like Gerard van Hay. Half a century long, he was one of the greatest. His principle was to try and compete continuously with only a few pigeons. A risky principle, but at the utmost sympathetic. The most important lofts he created were those of chemist Paul Gilmont and of Professor van Grembergen, veterinary surgeon at Ghent University. The latter won first and second national prize Barcelona with a half Fambruana pigeon in the beginning of the 60s. About 1930, André started with pigeon fancying, and one of his first birds was Audestier, Old Bull, a captured pigeon of the famous Camin stock at Leers Nord, a farmer at the French border near Lille. The pigeon that gained world fame was Jongestier, Young Bull, with his beautiful black eyes. It won two national Angoulême and one national Po, only one pigeon reaching its loft the day of the release. His favorite race was Dourdan. In regional contests where shovelfuls of money were taken, he won the big money 20 times. A lot of people are convinced that the steer, bull, was the best all-round pigeon ever. A second Fambruana phenomena was Tarzan, a blue cock, rather small, a thoroughbred pigeon with yellow-brown eyes, covered with gold dust containing a lot of tiny stripes. Tarzan was released in San Sebastian, Spain, on the 25th of July 1953 at 10 o'clock a.m. André found it in the loft at 10.15 p.m. the same day. Just like the steer, bull, Tarzan, came home the same day of the release. Van Bruvana won more than 12 first national prizes. His nephew, Ivo van Lerberge, twice Belgian champion, won one national Saint-Vincent and one international Perpignan. These two related pigeons both had the electricity of Lauer. Leopold Bostein of Moorslede, from the same year as Van Hey and Van Bruane, spent his youth between the terrors of the war in Passendale. His parents and their children fled together to Cahors in the south of France. His eldest brother stayed in Normandy. He did quite well over there and had a competition racehorse called Passport. Later on, Paul would breed a pigeon that turned out to be an ace and received the same name. Together with Moorman from Wacken, Bostein was one of the first members of the Western Flemish Association in 1935. The aim was to organize distance races versus the balloon champions. Due to his stickleback pigeons, Paul was a rising star after 1945. The highlight was his quadruple victory in the Paul National Race of 1950. First, second, third, fourth, 34th and 110th places with six enterings. The second and the third placed pigeons were grandsons of the Oude Bleken, Old Pale One, of Stichelbout of 1932. Later, he gathered the best pigeons of Vermaut, Labeeb and Descamp van Hasten. Crossbreeding with Catrice and de Vrind led to his famous pigeon Benoni. This ace finished ten times within the first 100 national, three times within the first ten. The second ace of the Bostan stock was Passport. His mother, the 700, was the best breeding hen Paul had ever had. De Cousse, Sock, as a feathered pigeon leg is called in Flanders, was a half-brother of Passport, with the same mother 700, a real champion. Paul Bostein played excellently for 20 years. His favorite distance was 800 kilometers. He reached his peak between 1965 and 1975. 
The Janssen brothers of Arendong originally were small-scale players who took part in speed races. Their father was already in fancying in the 19th century. His nickname was Drixke de Pau, a cigar maker. Until 1940, he was in charge. After that, his sons took over. His sons Alphonse and Franz got married and set up their own pigeon loft. In the Schoolstraat in Arendong, the miracle happened. With very little crossbreeding, only with a pigeon of their own stock that was given back to them, they built up the Janssen strain. This strain produced the highest percentage of famous offspring. Janssen set up more stocks all over the world than anybody else. Adrian, Louis and Charles each had their own task which they fulfilled in complete harmony for many years. Two other brothers, Fick and Chef, also had their jobs concerning the pigeons and Irma took care of the correspondence. Next to the clack, crush hat, also Louis van Loon with the help of Franz Janssen and butcher August Hafkes of Merksplas with the aid of Franz Janssen, the customs officer, were in the possibility to use this excellent material. What impressed me most was the biter, biter of Albert van Kouwenberg from Brussels and the 46 of Piet Verbaert from Druten. Louis told me that they bred about a hundred alike but that they sold them all. And this makes this fairy tale so unbelievable. The Janssen brothers never kept the best pigeons for themselves. The buyers always had first choice. The question is that whether these pigeons really were superior. I think the answer lies in the fact that their level of breeding was more stable than their competition level. And they kept up this level for about 40 years. This proves that inbreeding does not necessarily weaken a stock. Nothing is more difficult than crossbreeding, unless one breeds with Janssen pigeons. Nothing but results. That's the standard by which these birds were selected. Results were the only thing that counted. Continued inbreeding and selection is the key to the Janssen's success. The pigeons have grown inbreed resistant. I met the legendary champion Cornel Horemans at his home in Schoten in 1934 or 35. At that time, he was about 60 years old, a strong little man with a grey moustache and red cheeks. His brother Jeff, a poulter at Vincent Marians of Merxham, received a few chicks of this coal merchant. These were chicks of the notorious Torenlieger, Tower Liar, the Bleke, Pale One, and the Vechter, Fighter, at that time the best pigeons of Antwerp. The Lata Vos, late fox, of Hormans, I think it was from 1926, was in the forester's eye his top breeder. The Zwarte 34, black 34, the Wilde wild one, and the Grote Fontainebleau, big Fontainebleau, impressed me most, together with half a dozen other good pigeons. Hormans' best years are between 1930 and 1950. These pigeons were capable of everything. They were capable of leading the pack from Kievrin and did the same from Angoulême. Very important is that they were able of building up physical condition out of the blue. Their muscles always were sweaty, flexible and tense. They didn't even lose weight when they were basketed for three days without any food. I think that this ability of the organism to get as much energy as possible out of little nourishment is being underrated by a lot of other authors. In 1939, the Black 34 won the 8th National Chateau Roux and the 1st National Angoulême. 
That same year preceding the war, its brother, Liborne, won the second National Liborne. In 1937, it had won the ninth National Liborne. In my opinion, the Hormans pigeons were superior. By way of Hector de Smet and Van Spital, they would reach the highest form of success with Mark Rosens of Leerne. I couldn't think of any better crossbreed for the medium distances than that of Hormans and de Smet Matthijs. van der Wegen from Steenbergen is an ace in long distance racing. He is comparable with Stav Dusardin but better because he developed more strains and won more first prizes. The best pigeon that he ever had was a gift from Anton Lichtenberg, Jan Arden's green grazer. This cock was only as big as a fist but became world famous as the breeding cock out Doffertje. It was, like they say in the Walloon country, spoiled with qualities. Its pedigree consisted of the Oudestamboeder of 1945, of Jan Arden, Delbar de Gouffois, and the 38 and the 49, respectively, granddaughter and grandson of the ancestors. The 38, in my opinion, the best female of the Netherlands, dominated for several years the upbuilding. She won the sixth prize national from Saint Vincent. As a surprise, she laid an egg a few hours after the arrival. Its brother, the 49, won as a two-year-old the 7th National Saint Vincent in 1953. After that, they didn't fly as much anymore. If Jan Arden would have put a 48 and 38 together, this couple would have been the best imaginable pair. But this didn't happen. However, these three breeding pigeons are the basis of the Dutch long-distance races. I don't think they have ever been equaled. The mother of the 1945 ancestress was a one-year-old hen. It was a chick of the 1932 Kleine Lichte of Delbar and a nine-year-old breeding hen of Delouvois from Ronce. Morris bought his famous hen at the public sale at Ronson and took it home to his loft. According to Delbar, this hen had more sense than a lot of human beings. He could harp upon it for hours. The Lamme is the best pigeon that Janus van der Wegen ever bred out of his Jan Arden pigeons by way of Lichtenberg and Van Achtmaal. Van der Wegen obtained his Barcelona by crossbreeding a Hector de Smet's Horemans pigeon. It took the man from Steinbergen five years to find out what an excellent crossbreed this was. Two national Dax, five national Barcelona, 14 national Saint Vincent, and first prize national from Barcelona. The offspring procured him another 15 or 20 first national prizes. The best long-distance player since 1975 is Marcel Braakhuis from Maastricht. 50% Steenberg stock by way of Jan de Weert and the Kuipers brothers from Neer, near Riermont. Steenberg stock by the way of Baker, Berndrecht from Puttershoek and Westerhuis from Gouda, who twice won the first national prize from Saint Vincent, ahead of many thousand racers. Marcel Braakhuis owes his success to a Van Hee hen and a Jan Arden cock belonging to Miller Jan de Weert from Steenbergen. This pair of pigeons bred for many years and brought forth at least 20 good pigeons. Fons van Ophuizen nicknamed them Black Killers. Braakhuis is a retired driving school instructor, a man known not to commit many mistakes. He's a master in training his pigeons at the right moment. Between 65 and 85, this long-distance player, who never enters many pigeons, won a lot of first prizes.
For example, one national savasa out of 12,000 pigeons with two hours lead. The best was this Saint Vincent Victor de Zwarte 274. About 10 years ago, the Japanese visited Maastricht. Brakhuis gave them a warm welcome, but couldn't be persuaded to selling his hobby. But after a while, the bids became so nerve-wracking that he couldn't sleep anymore. Friends advised him to strike the iron while it was hot. He was offered a hundred thousand dollars for one of his famous black ones, not even the best. It was a world record and the champion called Tokyo to say he wanted to negotiate. So it happened after all. They were sent to the land of the rising sun. Also the best pigeon of the De Kerpers brothers from near, Beatrix, two national Dax and one national prize Saint Vincent, 1989. When we study the pedigree, it's obvious that as well as with Brakhuis, Kuipers, Van Leeuwen and Van Geel, the lines lead us to the 38 and 49 of Jan Aarden from Steenbergen. Stav Desardin from Groede, born in 1906, is the Dutch deacon of the long distance flights. He bred his best pigeon ever in the year 1929, after that cold winter. It was his blower, 593, that finished five times in the national leading pack from ducks. In 1937, the son of the Oude, 593, called Le Bless, flew one national saint Vincent and one national Bordeaux within a few weeks' time. In December 1944, Stav Desardins received four chicks from his friend Maurice Delbar, and perhaps one of them was a chick of the Kleine Lichte and the Delouvrois hen. During 1945, Stav became a racing cyclist. Since, mainly on his bike, he crossed Flanders and gathered another ten pigeons of Maurice's stock, all of them of 1944. And as a great surprise, six eggs of Maurice's best breeders. These were really the best of the best. Out of these, Hector Berlinguer, mayor of Aspelare, and Roger Delvinquiere, butcher at Blandrin, also received a few. In the beginning of the 50s, when I started out with Chef van den Broeke from Wilsbeke, I did everything possible to study those pigeons, to get hold of them and keep them pure. But in those days, there were other champions with other pigeons that performed just as well and sometimes even better than the Del Bars. So I didn't do enough in words and writing to preserve the best long-distance stock in the world. The Blower 593 and the Bliss were half-brothers with the same mother. This was the 12th of Charles de Meyer from Sluis, a wonder pigeon of Van der Voorde from Carnegie in crossbreed with Felix Staffels with the so-called Oude Witpen of Pros Weifels. She was nine years old at the time that Staff received her as a gift from this friend of father Victor Dujardin. In the 40s, Staff bought two hens, a little one and a big one. One of them belonged to Hector de Smet from Gerardsbergen. The big one was a dark brown hen of the Bricou strain that had belonged to a certain Verstringen from Maldegem who had bought it at a Cadamin auction in Charleroi. This pigeon turned out to be the best breeding hen of the loft during the ten years following the war. Between 50 and 54 he won three times the first national prize from Dax. In 55 he didn't win the first prize but started with four and six. The Blauer 593 and the Bless had always flown on nest. The latter aces, like the Debats and the Rose, were widowers.
the story of Pete de Wert's life in style, we had to visit his friend, partner, and top fancier, Jeff van den Broeke from Wielsbeke. On a windy and dreary day, we set off for Flanders. Jeff van den Broeke insisted that Pete and Henk de Wert would join us. Father and son de Wert were welcomed by Jeff van den Broeke and his daughter Pascaline. Pascaline is a veterinary surgeon who specialized in poultry and she inherited her father's passion for pigeons. Together with Henk de Weert, she assists the Van de Broeke de Weert colony. Over a glass of port, they discussed the latest topics, but most important was the trophy of the Royal Belgian Flying Club. Jeff normally doesn't boast with his trophies, but this showpiece received a place of honor in the living room. He has already won it twice, and during the last 10 years, no competitors, however strong they were, could keep him off the days. But already with the second glass, pictures appear and thoughts return to the year 1952. The year that the combination van den Broeke de Weert got started. Piet de Weert's skill was responsible for the Oude Bulls, which became the founder of the stock. It was 1946, the same year as the Claren of the Smet Matthijs. But the Oude Bulls was more suitable for long distances. The Oude Bulls cost 3,000 Belgian francs and it produced champions at Wilsbeke up till the sixth generation. It was related to the four pigeons of Mayer Bulls from Steiner who won four national prizes in two seasons. It was a brother of the mother of the first and tenth prize international Barcelona 1950. A little bit sad, they remember their three super pigeons. The Pete, an ace with a unique record, the Oude Bulls, that was even more pretty than its picture reveals. The Moons, a son of Max that played an important role in building up the colony. This album treasures pigeons and top records. The 16 was the only pigeon that survived Pete de Weert's reorganization of the Van den Broek colony. Pete found new champions for Wielsbeke, rather cheap, but with a lot of class. They played against names like Delbar, Latrice, De Vrind, Van der Espt, Van Bruane, Hector de Smet, De Smet Matthijs, Van He, Descamp Van Hasten, against every winged fame. And the colors still fly from the highest pole. Every month, Pete still climbs the stairs with his stiff legs to the loft where a great deal of his work is breeding. Before the master enters, the attendant Roland Collins cleans once and again the widow aloft. And again he goes over the world's famous inspection ritual. This is how an eyewitness, the late Jules Gallet, described it. He never looked in the eyes or the throat. Once he got hold of the pigeon, his left fingertips massaged the pectoral muscle like physiotherapists do with sore cyclist muscles. He always keeps the pigeon in his right hand, with his thumb on the back and the legs between his forefinger and middle finger. With his left forefinger and thumb, he starts to twist and pull the point of the beak, always keeping the head horizontal. He has done the same ritual with thousands of other pigeons. It never ought out. When a pigeon doesn't try to resist, this is due to a lack of character. When it does resist, it's a sign of willpower. This ritual enabled him to discover the best pigeons everywhere and to set up the best lofts in Belgium and abroad. Twisting and pulling doesn't have anything to do with a preference for long or short distances, nor with endurance. 
One can compare the difference between twisters and pigeons that don't resist with the difference between a racing stud and a heavy Belgian. Pigeons that do not react to what they don't like or what slightly hurts, pressure against the groin and the joints of the flight wings, are in most cases stupid domestic pets and prey animals in the wild. But one should be warned not to neglect the old-fashioned breeder's eye as part of the whole, as detail, as one of the many composing parts of a complex unity. These are the differences between to be or not to be. Didi, or the first national distance ace of 1989, is stealing the show in this colony at the moment. A magnificent cock like no other roaming our skies. He's a match for the peat, the outer bulls and the moons that we met before. With the stormy west wind pounding on the trees, the distance racers of Andenbroeke de Beer dive towards the plains watched by Roland Callens. For almost 40 years, this colony remained on the same high level. As long as I can breed pigeons like Didi, this is the best hobby I can think of, says Jeff van den Broeke. It looks as if the combination van den Broeke de Weert hasn't yet come to an end. Pete is 80 years old, but lively like no other. Jeff is ambitious like a novice, and Roland knows the ropes. What could get in the way of future successes? can call for the pigeons like an experienced fancier. But now, eating its little apple, it isn't at all interested in pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> 